नमस्कार वेलकम टू एक संवाद एट अरुणी मंकुर ऑन दी ओकेजन ऑफ वर्ल्ड सुइसाइड प्रिवेंशन डे वी आर ट्राइंग टू चेंज द नैरेटिव एंड वी आर ट्राइंग टू स्टार्ट अ कॉन्वर्सेशन आर गेस्ट टूडे इज मिसेज रोवेना फिलिप्स शी इज द डायरेक्टर प्रिंसिपल कंसल्टिंग साइकोलॉजिस्ट ट्रेनर लीडरशिप कोच डोमिनियन फिलिप्स कंसल्टेंसी वॉम वेलकम टू यू रोवेना एंड इट्स सो गुड टू हैव यू हियर Thank you so much for having me over. A word about Aruni Mankuran. This is an initiative for positive social change through self-development. The goal is greater well-being and happiness for all. At Aruni Mankuran, we believe that each person is unique and special. Way that each person can make a difference, that each person can have an impact, and that's what inspires us to keep going. World Suicide Prevention Day was established in 2003 by the International Association for Suicide Prevention in conjunction with the World Health Organization. 10 September each year aims to focus attention on the issue, reduce stigma and raise awareness among organizations, governments and the public, giving a singular message that suicides are preventable. The triennial theme for World Suicide Prevention Day for 2024-25 is changing the narrative on suicide with a call to action start the conversation. This theme aims to raise awareness about the importance of reducing stigma and encourage open conversations to prevent suicides. Change the narrative on suicide and shift from a culture of silence and stigma to one of openness understanding and support call to action and encourage everyone to start the conversation on suicide and suicide prevention every conversation no matter how small contributes to a supportive understanding society by initiating these vital conversations we can break down barriers raise awareness and create a better culture for support So our guest today is Mrs. Rovena Phillips. Uh, she has a master's degree in psychology. She is pursuing her PhD. In her career spanning 25 years, she has been functioning in various capacities in human resources, operations, academia, training, and psychological consulting. She wears so many hats. She has many professional certifications to her credit. She has been recognized by Nagpur First. at IIM Nagpur in the social track category for her outstanding contribution to mental health showcasing dedication and expertise uh thank you so much rovena for joining us it's such a pleasure to have you here thank you prakya it's my pleasure indeed as we get into this conversation um you know first of all i think we would like to address the issue about why is there a stigma around suicide and how should we overcome it right so i think the whole idea of even mental health is still stigmatized mm-hmm. and the fact is just like we overcame so many other uh, diseases that we wanted to talk about one of which i would want to name as hiv you know a lot of awareness was created around the stigma and things changed because suicide again is not just a matter of mental health it's a matter of public health as well true so the only way we can get around it is by talking about it and that's how we normalize it absolutely and that's when i think it doesn't sound like a stigma but there are some myths around it where uh, you know people might think that uh, talking about suicide might put the idea of suicide in somebody's head <laughs> yes. so uh, you know the the whole idea is again we need more voices more awareness to make sure we are talking about it and once we start talking about it you know everybody gets to understand that they are not alone there are yes. so many other people face the same thing yeah right. um and you know i remember that we were told suicide is not really someone trying to kill themselves or you know take their own lives it's a cry for help so if that help is available at the right time you know maybe we can uh, save that life 
Uh, Ravina, you've been working with students and you've been working with different uh, groups of people. Uh, you know, in your own experience, what are some of the factors that uh, risk factors, let's say, for, you know, thinking of committing suicide or taking their own lives? Talk to us about that. Hmm. Right. So, uh, you know, the a lot of the, the suicide rate is higher among the age group from 15 to 29. So we will be surprised that the younger lot who have just started their life so much ahead of them mm. can think of something like this. Uh, you know, true. so the, you know, the whole thing is that as they are growing in their developmental stage, there are a lot of understanding that probably they are not aware of in terms of how to build resilience, how to get help. Probably the understanding also that I've met so many of my clients that only I'm going through that. Be it the matter of fact, where it's just a small little thing, a breakup in a relationship, a failure in academics, or, you know, a sudden shock of someone uh, breaching their trust can come to them as a big blow mm -hmm. and don't know how to respond to it, have no conceptual understanding that this happens and how we can cope up with that. So that impulsivity can get them to the idea of this is the end of it, even for the matter of fact, some cases of cyberbullying mm -hmm. where the child can, you know, feel exposed to the entire world and think that this is end. Mm -hmm. That's it. Now what will I do? How will I face the world? So the next thought is I need to end it now. Mm -hmm. And that's when the idea of suicide comes to the child. And like you rightly said, in that moment, sensitive moment, if they have somebody to maybe hear them or someone they can put a text to, or someone they can kind of call. And some of the young kids, they sometimes put posts on their Insta mm -hmm. or, you know, their status. If someone happens to notice that. Mm -hmm. These have been some very sensitive moments where, uh, you know, uh, there has, I've been able to work and I'm, and a lot of us can work hearing them out and reaching out for help. So very simple things that can, lead to suicidal ideation in young people also from the background of uh you know maybe sexual assault during their childhood mm -hmm. uh you know difficult family background not having a great support system when it comes to parents mm -hmm. so again they don't have a place to fall back and then when they get another shock again it goes back like a spiral mm -hmm. and that's when we see that you know, young lives can really be at risk. Yes. Uh, and, you know, surely it's not something that happens suddenly. So talk to us a little bit about what are some of the warning signs that people should be aware of, you know, in terms of anybody around them, how can they watch and come to know that maybe this person is even thinking about it? Warning signs. Right. So as human beings, it's very simple. We are the way we are. We function in a certain way. We have certain moods, certain temperaments, certain patterns where we communicate. Hmm. So anything that we see like a deviation from the baseline behavior, for example, someone is very talkative and suddenly he is kind of withdrawn, not talking. Hmm. Someone is very active and, you know, uh, or rather even if some everybody has to be active but if a person is sleeping more a uh, loss of appetite not smiling enough not interacting so these are some signs that can be you know non verbal signs that can should be in fact taken into consideration and the questions need to be asked that what's happening what's going on and then you also have, uh, you know, statements and verbatims like life is not making sense. It's so uh, not meaningful. Um, I think I'm done with it. I wish it would have ended. It won't matter if I'm not around. These are some, you know, words that we have to be very cautious of and 
these are some warning signs, early warning signs where we can catch hold of the person, have a conversation. And uh, with that, with the timely help mm -hmm. and uh, support system and maybe professional expertise, it's quite, uh, you know, portable in that sense. We can save lives through uh, taking this approach. Yeah, I think that's very valuable. And, you know, some of the red flags, particularly with reference to the student community, we have been reading about it, you know, in Kota particularly, there have been so many instances. Uh, how do you think the student community can uh, help their friends if they get to know that uh, this person is ideating suicide? Yeah. I think first thing uh, is that the student community again has to look at it with a non-stigmatized approach. So the whole idea is you're overreacting. I think you're acting too sensitive. Mm -hmm. So if this is the approach, then we mean the student community themselves may fail. But I believe these days the student community is very aware Hmm. and very open to even the term mental health and they understand these terminologies and uh, in fact i've had so many students who have reached out to me telling me that their friends are going through this so how can i help hmm. what is the support i can provide so that is a level of initiative commitment accountability they take and then in some time, some occasions, obviously, they have to be encouraged to somewhere get the friend to seek professional help so that, uh, you know, he can, a lot of underlying issues can be addressed. And uh, um, I remember one of the instances where, uh, you know, a status was put something about the mental uh, health issue that the child was facing maybe in some sense I would say it was you know intermittent uh, depression and I would wonder why would a you know young child would do that expose uh, you know himself or herself to the whole community of students putting it on the status and I said I just inquired and she said you will not believe I received 25 plus friend request and so many messages asking me and I feel so comforted and I feel so strengthened and she quickly got, got out of it. So I have come across instances like this where uh, these things have happened and the student community has really come forward to say, hey, we are there for you. Mm -hmm. That made that difference, a big difference. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that emotional support, you know, just the fact that you're valuable, you're precious in this world and you matter. You matter. We okay. notice you. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, let's say, Ravina, if you uh, got to know that, you know, somebody is actually in the act of doing it, what is the immediate response that, uh, you know, should be expected from uh, people around or from uh, professionals that are in touch with that person? How would you deal with that crisis moment? Talk to us about that. Right. I think the immediate is to be there to avert it. So yes. uh, not describing a lot of critical things that have been handled. But yes, in some sense, a person, an authority, a parent, or a friend being there with the person to make sure that he is not taking that step. Mm -hmm. Taking away all the objects, possible objects that we can think could be around, you know, like naming the shop objects or something that the person can consume, mm -hmm. you know, all that to be taken away and the person, you know, be put into uh, a comfortable conversation, comforted, uh, you know, uh, surrounded, like you said, you matter. That's the message that goes out make him to kind of calm down and uh, then uh, reach out to professional help. It could be a psychologist. It could be a reference to a psychiatrist in this case, which is kind of a 
mandate uh, so if needed the person can be also put on immediate help of not only counseling and therapy but on medications as well hmm. parents to be taken into loop and confidence and then whatever is causing that trying to address all the factors that are affecting uh, the child and constant follow up that's most important because a recurrent hmm. behavior and attempt one time help will not help so very rigorous follow ups uh 24 by 7 assured help to the okay. child that yes. you don't have to think hmm. any time uh, any time the call Uh, just a phone call away a message away and also trying to allocate like a a buddy with the student if particularly if the child is studying to make sure that he has that close buddy who can watch him and you know be there and keep watching the risk the element of uh, you know the ver- verbal language the non verbal language a lot of uh, areas in that sense um, to mm-hmm. handle the crisis it's critical uh, so um we are like on high alert and mm-hmm. uh, also yeah making sure that you know the child is safe mm-hmm. and i think a little bit of the element of judgment you know be non judgmental if you know that these people are not going to be judgmental about the situation i am in about how i'm thinking so the taboo of uh, mental health not being spoken about i'm so happy to hear what you're saying that the student community is more aware and uh, they're willing to help they're willing to take that extra step you know um what should be the role of the institutions particularly educational institutions what is the role that they can play not only in prevention uh, but also in creating awareness so uh, the uh, the the role of the educational institutions is pivotal mm-hmm. one is the fact that they appoint every insti- educational institution is now appointing a counselor a psychologist in the institution that is something they are doing and not only doing that but in wherever i am as part of the institutions they have been extremely supportive of the idea of mental health not just you know like for the sake of it but really uh supporting uh the counselor you know whenever there is any uh, need referring uh, students as well having a proper sitting arrangement like a chamber where it is uh kind of advertised that the counselor or the psychologist is present so as so time you can go and meet for these iz and students are encouraged as well so that ways uh, i see that the role of the institution is really pivotal in fact i have seen a lot of support coming in when issues or were even concerns were raised that student needs more support the entire faculty community or the administrative community be it the student community everyone has kind of come out to show their support so that's really encouraging and to then see the success story and the turnaround is even more beautiful yes and rewarding so i'm sure you have a few stories to share you can of course omit the names but just talk to us a little bit about some of the people and some of the cases that probably came to you and how you worked through them if you can talk to us yeah maybe not divulging details but uh, definitely if you if, because we are talking about suicide so maybe you know i of course i meet a student community from in all these years i mean uh, you know a decade uh, that where students have attempted you know uh, in fact in one of the very uh, exceptional scenario there was a there was a student who fainted in the lab in one of the labs and uh, she was brought to the uh, physician with all her friends surrounding her around uh, 10 people uh, of her friends surrounding her she was absolutely unconscious couldn't maintain eye contact mm-hmm. she was lying on the bed and i was continuously getting calls 
uh, to come and kind of attend to her. And when I met the physician, the physician said, this is physically, she's fine. So this doesn't seem like my uh, case. I would want to kind of refer it to you. And uh, a little bit of conversation in the conversation, the only thing, Thing, the girl was mentioning that I don't want to live anymore um, and the, all her friends were so scared that they were not leaving her for a minute they didn't know you know what steps she could take in all this uh, through uh, you know calming her down and doing what we do in the counseling sessions the idea that came out was she experienced breach of trust for the first time and she was around 16 years old mm-hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, I can't imagine that her she experienced breach of trust from her best friend and her sister. Mm-hmm. So this was one very simple where we wouldn't imagine something like that happening. Mm-hmm. In some of the other instances where there are so many in one of the instances, there's a very good looking, uh, you know, uh, smart, confident boy that walks in. And slowly in the course of the conversation said, I did something very bad. And the moment, um, uh, you know, he said that, Mm -hmm. uh, I knew what had happened, right? I got an idea. And then he kind of sleeved up his shirt and he showed me all the marks Mm -hmm. that how, you know, he Mm -hmm. was, uh, you know, in the process of self-harming. And sometimes... The loss of life can just happen in accident you know sometimes they think that diverting my pain to the body mm-hmm. is takes away my pain from the mind so uh, that's why they do that but yes it any impulsivity any the idea of uh you not being important your life not being important can lead to a loss mm-hmm. and uh, any wrong cut anywhere you know, it is a very uh, young child, just 19 years old. And of course, um, he's doing well now. Uh, I'm happy about it. There are so many pragya. There's one instance that I uh, wondered, there was a child who was behaving very erratic in his class. And uh, those days, um, the Faculty said he has an iPhone, so seems like he's a spoiled brat, mm. spoiled rich brat. Mm. Uh, and uh, I happened to kind of see his non-verbal cues and called him and spoke to him mm-hmm. and uh, said, what's going on? Mm-hmm. And then he gradually opened up and uh, he had decided his date, time and place to end his life. Just again, 16, 17 year old. And what went wrong is it was a case of cyberbullying. And Mm -hmm. you know, video was shooted, and you would imagine something like that happening with a girl, Mm -hmm. but we probably might not imagine something like this happening with a boy and affecting the young life so much. Yes, yes. So um and of course it's been years now. He is doing pretty well very established in fact he promoted the idea of mental health and uh, done a lot of good work around it (laughs) so there are so many young lives that have changed and it's indeed gives me the greatest privilege and i am humbled that i have been able to make some difference uh, and see lives changed and saved so therefore Believing in the idea that suicide is absolutely preventable mm-hmm. and talking about it can really bring a lot of lives um, to a brighter side of, uh, you know, uh, life and thought. Yeah. I'm so glad, uh, Ruvina, you shared these stories. The purpose of sharing these stories is that, you know, if you can look beyond that moment, that impulse if it just passes off you know they can rebuild so having played that role you know that crucial role at that moment i'm sure uh, it's so important Uh, also you know um, the fact that people don't suddenly commit suicide they talk about it isn't it important 
for us to get rid of the taboo and if you feel someone is thinking about it it's a good idea to ask that person are you thinking of doing this so you can get that feedback uh, you know yeah please share yeah yeah you're right and uh, sometimes uh, the fact is the other person also would wonder what exactly is happening Uh, so like like a lot more awareness they wouldn't even realize they would just say oh he's just being negative these are some terms wrong be so negative be positive think positive so you have all the definitely the motivational talk coming in and of positivity hmm. but understanding that these are warning signs and the other person has to feel validated with his feeling because when we say that you are negative Mm. that's a judgment mm. absolutely, absolutely we've already passed the judgment we're already saying and mm. that's where you shut the other person off mm. so having the skill the understanding of what to say mm. when a person is going through like that mm. is also very crucial yes. it might just trigger in a different direction see therefore people misunderstanding me again therefore i don't share with people because now i am labeled as pessimistic and negative so like you rightly said that suicide has stages the first stage is ideation at the stage of ideation we don't see any threat the person gets the idea yes. of ending life not looking beyond like you said to say that the moment is past but he catches hold of this idea hmm. that i think i need to end my life and before they reach this idea is the awareness really helps that when you arrive at that stage you already know what's happening with you true and after the idea then comes the threat of planning and execution mm. Mm. because they think of everything right how mm. what is going to be used what is the best time when this person will not around this enough planning hmm. that goes on in the head to take this step yes where to go and the fact of even going beyond the idea that it can be painful or whatever hmm. they are facing emotionally you know because it's painful to harm yourself it's not something that anybody would want to do Absolutely. and then the threat stage and then the execution hmm. so so many times there are signs that they give like oh my life is going to be great from some of the cases like it's going to be great from so and so date hmm. Hmm. so one should wonder what he's trying to say sometimes we might just overlook right right what is happening after that date hmm. Hmm. i mean what are you planning yes so the thing is asking the right questions and also maybe directly asking are you going through anything like you know hmm um i is your life okay how are you feeling you know these yes. kind of empathetic questions can help them open up mm-hmm. uh instead of just you know like judging the person or labeling the person as a negative person or you know maybe over sensitive or over dramatic or over reacting uh in in lot of circumstances these instances happen and that's when people shut down yeah and i'm so glad that you emphasize the idea of having a conversation most of the time people are very skeptical about what will happen if i go to the psychologist what is the psychologist going to do so the idea that it's a conversation we'll talk about whatever is the concern you know and it's like a gaat kholne jaisa it's like opening the knot untying the knot absolutely, uh, so uh, absolutely right uh before we conclude this ek sambad uh, ravana are there some ideas that you would like to share is there a message you have for the community yeah i think for the community i, I would say we are all in this rush mm-hmm. and uh, we actually have lost sight uh of you know human issues that one 
is facing because we are facing so many things and there are so many other things that are engaging us some of which is also our social media hmm. uh and our mobile so i would tell each and everyone to just take a pause take a breath hmm. you know remember also those times which we have gone past which was covid where we really valued relationships we didn't take life for granted uh we knew how what it means to lose somebody mm. uh and that void cannot be uh, replaced so realize that fact that every single life is precious yes. while one would think oh that one is gone and it just sounds like a news but you know in all these years i have realized and the the depth of the statement that every life is precious no one can fill the void of one who has gone no one is replaceable every one every single life is precious so it's worthwhile to take a pause talk about uh you know the idea of life and not shy away from the topic of suicide prevention and uh, look around and if you find somebody just have a conversation and i think i would just like to add here you know sometimes uh, there are people who have survived an attempt it's so important for us not to put that label and all the time focus on that aspect of their existence that's another very important thing if someone attempted suicide and has come out of it survived thanks to timely help and support uh, we need to destigmatize that we don't need to you know stick that label and uh, continue to identify that person with that one particular thing so um, it was uh, wonderful having you on ek samvad ravina thank you so much for your time and thank you for talking to us about your experiences as a psychologist okay. and uh, more than anything else thank you for helping so many young people and uh, also even saving lives thank you thank you so much thank you so much okay pleasure